later on. Detectors on. We start measuring the offset, which is the electronic noise of the whole system. We have to do it every every time we perform a measurement, and then we have to switch on everything in the lab. I was born in Granada and I studied physics at the University in Granada. I did my PhD at the Astrophysical Institute for, of Andalusia on Jupiter atmosphere and vertical distribution of, of clouds in Jupiter atmosphere. After that, I, I did my postdoc at the Free University in Amsterdam, uh, working with a group of uh, Professor Hovenier, when where I started to work on, on these light scattering experiments. Later on, I came back to Granada, and I, am, I have set up a, a new instrument here in Granada. There are mineral particles in many different parts in the solar system, especially in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere of the Earth, but also in other bodies of the solar system, like comets and the atmosphere of Mars, Titan, and so on. So these mineral particles affect the radiative balance of the, of the atmosphere, uh, affecting, therefore, their, their climate. So it's very important to study the scattering behavior of these, these mineral particles. This is usually completely covered because we want to avoid any stray light coming from, from LEDs or whatever that will distort the measurements. Let's now switch on the laser so we can have a light source. We can also put the aerosol beam, that then, then is going to be very noisy, so we have to switch on. Well, that is a vacuum cleaner just yes, absorbing the, the particles. see the laser itself but since we have this cloud of particles we can see the light is scattered by this cloud of particles scattered light is detected by this photomultiplier tube that, that moves along this rim from positions close to the forward direction, moving all the way around here, to positions close to the backward direction. So this is the phase function, it's the angular distribution of the scattered light. We see that in the direction of the, of the laser, uh, the intensity is, is, is the maximum of the intensity and it decreases at side scattering angles and then it goes up again. That is, these two points are not real data, so this is because there is a reflection back from the back core time 
and we will see it in the background measurement. And these two elements of the scattering matrix are supposed to be zero and they are zero for uh, randomly oriented particles with a certain degree of symmetry in their, ch their shape. So this is for white clay. Venga, pasa. I am focused on the, on the experiment, but some other people of the group are performing uh, observation of comets and also doing some modeling. So if you uh, develop a code, you have to test that this is the right one, and the only way to test that is to compare with this experimental data. So you can use this, this data in different ways. They can also use it as inputs of, of reality transfer models, for instance, when some people in our group, like Daniel Girado and Fernando Moreno, they are performing, or they have performed a Monte Carlo code for, for simulating the, the scattering, in multiple scattering in the cometary coma. So they use as input of the model the scattering matrices of these mineral particles that are thought to be in cometary coma, like olivines and silicates and so on. And of course, I was not the only one working in the lab. I, I also have the real work of many different technicians from the institute. Uh, one of them was in charge of the software, another on the, of different part of the hardware. So it's difficult in the sense that you cannot do it by yourself unless you are <laughs> perfect and you have knowledge of, of electronics, optics, and also on light scattering because you have to also know what you want to get from this, from this data. Now we are performing measurements with, with dust, with white clay, which is, uh, let's say, it's a quite cheap sample, so we can repeat uh, the measurements as many, many times as we want, and we can also compare, because the, these measurements were also performed in Amsterdam, so we can also compare with previous data, so that we can be sure that this instrument is really working. And now in the shell we, are, we have waiting for us uh, samples of calcite and two very nice samples of, of desert dust. One of them was collected in the Observatorio de Sierra Nevada, here high in the mountains. And it was during summer, so this, it was a, a huge cloud of dust coming from the Sahara Desert. And it just started, it started to rain, so this, this dust sedimentated, so we could collect it. And it's very important because they are very, very small particles. So that is the interesting samples for, for studying the Earth atmosphere because they can remain in the atmosphere for, for months, affecting the radiative balance. And apart from that, we have some people working at uh, Centro de Astrobiología preparing some Martian analogs and some calcite particles and so on. So we are just, let's say, we are just starting with this new, new instrument and we hope to have many different results and interesting results.